Let's look at some of our Jabber registration issues that could occur. First, to start with, we need to know what does the PC or laptop need to have connectivity to or with in order for that Jabber client to launch. Well, first of all, it is going to need to have access to the IM and Presence service, the CTI manager for desk phone mode, and the TFTP server for soft phone mode. So whatever servers those are on, we're going to need to make sure we have connectivity to them. We're also going to need to be able to exchange some protocols and some messages with our servers. So with our presence, I am in presence server, we need to do those SOAP HTTP exchanges along with XMPP. We need to make sure if it's the communications manager, the IP phone services, TFTP, SIP, <laughs> and if it's desk phone mode, we need the CTI QBE file or protocol to be working. And ultimately though, this guy, username and password, and pointing to the proper server are probably going to be key when you're logging into that Jabber client. So the user needs to supply these items and may or may not supply them properly. So we need to make sure that it isn't as simple as they're typing in the wrong username or password or pointing somehow to the wrong presence server for the login credentials. So let's say they launch the little Jabber client and they get an invalid user ID or password. It says, please try again, very friendly. <laughs> Could it be expired credentials? Or is the LDAP server unreachable? Either one of those is gonna cause a failed login. Even if like the user's 100% sure they typed in the right information, these could be the problems behind the scenes. Or if we're unable to connect to the network, we, and it says, please check your network connection, we have a lot of issues It could be here. It could be truly a network issue. <laughs> it could be DNS, a name resolution issue. It could be service issues with communications managers, I am in presence. Is the user licensed for Cisco Jabber? Is our Jabber maybe client incompatible with our NAT settings, or are we using an ASA, we're we using VPN, any connect service, uh, Jabber for Windows, should I configure NAT rules on the Cisco ASA for this, that sort of thing. I mean, when we get down into the real guts of the security side of things, we're going to need to probably delve in very deeply to see, again, did it ever work? If it has stopped working, what changed? Did we have some type of firewall update? Did we change our intrusion prevention detection systems? Did we turn on or off NAT services? Are we using a different VPN client? You know, you start to really go down this path and you're just going to have to work with the security people. And if that's yourself, you know, kind of think about what did I change? What happened here to kind of really take a look at why security could be breaking my connection. But if it's hopefully some of the more common ones, like it truly is just a flapping network or a DNS issue, you know, those are probably a lot easier and more common than running into some of these security issues.